Okay. okay, welcome to The Real Build. I'm your host, Bill Ryman, your broker builder. And today I have a special guest coming from Fairfield, Connecticut. He is the managing director of award-winning Connecticut Valley Homes. He's a modular construction expert with over 20 years experience in the business. He is a video entrepreneur who believes in the art of conversation, connecting people, creating an environment of inclusivity it's a hard word to say, <laughs> in idea generation in order to grow the off-site construction industry. And I love what he's doing there. His spirit for helping others started early as a trauma medic in the U.S. Army. Thank you for your service. And through the use of video, he has helped many others tell their story. Dave Cooper, welcome to The Real Build. How you doing? Doing great, Bill. Thanks for having me on. Yeah, I appreciate it, man. Come, you coming on. And like I said, I love what you're doing with video. People should definitely check you out. Um, it's you're kind of, you know, bringing a lot of the building industry together by the power of video. And I'm all for that, too. And that's why I started this podcast, too. So it's awesome, yeah. man. So I like to get started, you know, with kind of asking about your background. So let's talk about who is Dave Cooper. Yeah. So born and raised Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania. Uh, went straight to the military after after I graduated high school. Was a uh, combat army medic uh, for ten years in the United States Army. Uh, served all over the all over the world. Uh, when I got out of the service, uh, I actually went worked for Johnson and Johnson. I was a spinal implant rep. I was, believe it or not, training neuro and orthopedic spine doctors in spinal implant techniques. Oh wow. Um, and, you know, you need this big degree to get that. I took a master's degree to get it. I didn't have that. I only had a two-year degree. But uh, I guess who you know is better than what you know sometimes. And I just kept putting my foot in the door, foot in the door. And I found somebody that was a veteran and from Pittsburgh. And uh, they, they gave me a chance. Um, so I, I did that for about seven, eight years. And uh, then the World Trade Center hit back in 2001. Uh, I was there the day the towers came down, and I was a rescue worker there for the first four days until FEMA came and kicked us out. During this period, though, I was flipping properties on the side. I just, just some side hustle money is what I was doing, but it was really September 11th, uh, you know, 2001 is when I sat down and said, man, I'm just not happy doing what I'm doing. And that was, you know, doing the spinal implants, you know. Mm -hmm. I found that a lot of the doctors, the neuro and orthopedic spine guys had horrible egos. Everything was all about them, and it, it just drove me nuts on a, on a regular basis. So I started flipping homes, and then I finally decided to build a spec home. So I bought a piece of property out in Pennsylvania, and the guy next to me bought a piece of property out in Pennsylvania. Next thing you know, he's putting up a modular. He's moving in the people he sold to already, and I don't even have my sheetrock on. Wow. So that's that's kind of the story on how I got from point A to point B in a in a in a small small snippet. That's that's awesome to hear, and I mean, just coming from where you did and getting into the construction industry too. I mean, let's discuss that a little bit more though. So, how did you really? Let's dive deeper into how you really got started in construction. What was your reason? Yeah, it, it really was. So my reason, I was trying to find something else to do outside of the medical world. Okay. Um, when, I, when I was younger, I was framing houses with my uncle, right? I'll never forget, 4.30 in the morning, picking me up on my summertime off, right? And, and just being out there till 3, 4 o'clock every day, I swore on my life that I would never do construction when I was a young kid. <laughs> um, but but at, as I got older and through life experiences and what have you, you know, you kind of go back to your roots a little bit. And uh, that's really what it was. I was just looking for a side hustle to make some extra income uh, on top of what I was doing, but also started really loving working with my hands and being out in the field and not always being at the same places all the time. Uh, and that's really what drove me to, to, to keep doing what I was doing. Uh, but it wasn't until that, you know, September 11th where I sat down, well, I, was, I was over there and I said, you know, I got to make a change. Mm -hmm. You know, what, what do I love doing? Because the, the, the medical stuff was driving me crazy at that point. It wasn't the same as being a combat medic in, in the service where everybody pulls together. It was more corporate, more political, uh, wasn't always customer or patient based. It was more financially based. Uh, decision wise and and that just wore on me and that's that's when I made the shift and that's why I went back into construction 
Yeah, I kind of had a similar story too. I mean, when I growing up being, and I've said this before in the past, being kind of the grunt, I guess, or the, you know, digging the ditches, sweeping the jobs, because I grew up in the business. So I never thought that I would stay in it, you know, because you kind of, it's a love hate thing, I guess yeah. is a way of putting it too. Right. And, and you, you know, you're doing all the, all this hard, hard work and the side, but it, it, in the reality, it made you better at what you're doing because you learned it too. And I'm sure you being in the army and going through what you did and that process too is obviously probably more than anything made you better at what you're doing as well too. So that's Yeah, awesome. for sure. For sure. I mean, I think everything's really based around life experiences for all yeah. of us, right? Mm -hmm. You know, you, you think you want one thing until you do it. Yeah. yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, yeah for sure. So I mean, I, a little background on you too. You've been in the construction industry for over 20 years, correct? I um, have. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So you chose to get into, I want to talk about modular construction a little bit. And, you know, you chose to get into modular homes instead of traditional site construction. You kind of brought that up about your friend, the example there. So what is modular construction and why did you finally make the choice to get into it? Yeah. So mo modular uh, is just the process in which we build. Okay. An actual modular home or modular building is the same materials, meets the same specifications, same codes as any traditional site builder has to meet. We just choose to use a manufacturing facility out of the weather to put most of it together and then bring it to the job site versus, you know, building it right outside, like up here it's snowing in the snow. Okay. And, and that's really what the difference is. Okay. And then why did you make the choice to go into modular? You know, I fell in love with modular when, when Ron Seascholtz, the guy that was building next to me, you know, to make it a small world, his wife grew up across the street from my father in Johnstown, Pennsylvania. Now, granted, this is in New Jersey, yeah. right? And in, 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 in Jersey and PA right on the border. And, and it was just, it's, it was amazing because once we figured that out, you know, then I said to him, I said, listen, I'll work for you for free for six months, you know, as long as it takes, whatever you give me. He goes, I'll give you six months. I said, I just want to learn this. And he was older, right? Mm -hmm. So it's not like I was going to be a competitor. He was kind of winding down in, in his career. And when I really got into it and I realized that the material and the process and everything that we were doing was the same as site built and had the same quality that I would expect for anything that I do, uh, it was a no brainer for me. That's, that's how it all got started. I said, it's, it's to me, it's silly to site build anymore, you know, given all the, given all the value that comes out of a, a manufacturing process. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, and that's awesome to hear too. I mean, like, and, and they, and I've said this to some people before you working for free and learning the business too, that probably stood out to him big time, but then you learned I don't know, probably how many years of information just by doing that within a six month period from him. And that's what made you yeah. better. Yeah. You know, education costs money. My grandfather always said yeah. you can you can go to college and learn. Right. Or go to school or you can go out and try it on your own. But either way, you're going to get your you're going to pay for it or get your ass handed to you. Right. So it's just <laughs> just the way it goes. Yeah, I love that. Yeah. So. Let's get into modular a little bit too, because obviously we're different down here. What we're doing, it's kind of hard to do anything in a minute because we're because our codes and stuff, and we're more concrete construction, so on. So that hasn't really happened down where I'm at. But that's why I'm so interested in it with you. So why should people build modular? What are some of the benefits? Let's go over the benefits of doing it. Yeah, one one of the the main benefits is the quality of what you're getting. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, being in the construction world, we're all fighting with the trade labor issue right now. Yeah, yeah. You know, they, you're not you're not finding 20 year old plumbers out there anymore, right? Uh, they they all want to do technology and what have you. Our industry hasn't changed, but with modular construction, if you saw, did you see? If you saw my last video, I was standing on a job site, and then next to my job site was a stick builder. Mm -hmm. You know, and our material always stays dry. 
I don't have to worry about mold. I don't have to worry about warping any of those things in our home because we're using dry killed lumber. And we're using a, a skilled trade in the manufacturing plant to put it together. And we're using precision cutting tools also. So one board's not going to be, you know, three eighths of an inch smaller than the next board or vice versa. Everything fits together. They're much tighter, which helps us build a much more solid home. And also with that is the energy efficiency of our homes because we build from the inside out. Right? My sheetrock and taping is completely done before I have any exterior sheathing on my studs. So that allows us to walk around the entire house fire seal all the outlets you know through the house we can pretty much stop all the air penetration which is good and bad because it causes us another set of problems if we do too much um but yeah i mean it's a perfectly dry house you know inside and out that your home has been sealed and built you know almost with perfection versus you know a site builder you pick up a day laborer and you tell him to hang that that plywood over there but he didn't care if there was insulation in it or not mm -hmm. You know, just then it gets hung, and that's where you that's that's where you lose the the consistency and the quality that we don't lose because we have eyes on the whole time in the factory. So the difference is with energy efficiency, because I mean it's becoming bigger and bigger too. Yeah. How how are they getting more energy efficient out of a modular? Yeah, just just by the nature of how we build from the inside out. Okay. You know, it's just more energy efficient. Our lumber's tighter just because we're gotcha. using laser guided saws to cut everything. So, and we're able to walk around behind the sheetrock and seal all those mm -hmm. penetrating holes from switches and outlets. Gotcha. Yeah, for okay. sure. So. Okay. Well, so, what about like on the custom end of it? I mean, I know with the stick build versus, you know, modular, is there more as far as modular is a, a downside because you can't get as custom? Is there a downside to modular building? There, well, that? there, there definitely is some things we cannot do. We're okay. not going to in the Northeast, I should say, right yeah. in the South and Midwest uh, and West Coast. It's different. But in my neck of the woods, you know, doing anything over a nine foot six ceiling height on the first floor is very difficult. Okay. Now, that doesn't mean I can't have, you know, vaulted 20, 30 foot rooms. We do it all the time. Uh, but if we're talking about an entire house where you want 10, 11 foot ceilings, that's not something that's going to be modular friendly, at least in the Northeast. But in, in the South, the Carolinas, Midwest, those things are possible, but the infrastructure is not as, 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 as old as ours is. Mm -hmm. Our limitations in the Northeast are based on transportation. The bridges are lower, the streets are narrower, it's not, yeah, it's not new transportation. So, um, but with that also said, you know, we can pretty much do anything a site builder can do. Uh, vaulted rooms, ceilings. I mean, we may, we may do a hybrid where we do, you know, 80% modular. Mm -hmm. And then the 20% that's super custom, we custom build. Yeah, true. Yeah, you know, just, like, uh, just like you would, but we still speed up our process and our quality control by doing it that way. Yeah, and after seeing your video too, it almost makes you question, you know, your last video I'm talking about, why wouldn't somebody do a modular build, you know, because it, it, it's such a major difference on time frame too, uh, where you're at, and that's what you were pointing out in that video. Yeah, you know, that's, that's the biggest question too. So why, why would somebody choose to go uh, with a stick built over you? Yeah. I, I, you know, it's, it's lack of education, okay. or lack of knowledge, really. Uh, it's changing. You know, the world is changing. Offsite construction in general, whether it's modular, panelized, concrete log, post and beam, uh, it's becoming more and more prevalent, you know, mm -hmm. within the construction industry and even the bigger players of the world, the KB Homes, Toll Brothers. Mm -hmm. I don't know who's down your way, MBR maybe. Uh, you know, they're, they're all looking at this now because of the trade labor issue. You know, uh, there's Margaret Whelan, and I talk about her a lot because she has a saying, it's called PMS, pale, male, and stale. Th those are the big players at the top of the food chain. But what's happening now is they're starting to put their efforts into looking at offsite construction because their pockets are being hurt because they can't get their 30, 50, 60, 70,000 production homes built anymore by skilled, and that's the key word, skilled trade labor. 
which causes them legal issues, causes them all other, you know, all kinds of other issues. So the pendulum is really switching towards this. And I think as it does, you'll start seeing more of the got milk type commercials come out <laughs> where the industry hopefully comes together as opposed to always trying to, you know, think we have some of these magical secrets on how to build something. Mm -hmm. um, but it's education. Yeah. And so like going deeper into it too, like what are some of the misconceptions people have with modular? Because I mean, obviously not being educated uh, in your process too. And that's why I have you on because I mean, I'm learning more about it too. Because like I said, down here, we don't really have that option. Mm -hmm. But so what are the misconceptions that could maybe prevent somebody from going modular? Let's yeah, they, they, they lump us in with more HUD-based product, manufactured homes. Gotcha. Right, because we say we're a manufactured product. You know, more people would think, you know, double-wide, single-wide type mm -hmm. homes that are on steel chassis versus, you know, 2 by 10s 2 by 12 you know, rims. So that that's really the biggest misconception. They do not understand the terminology modular versus, you know, a manufactured or a HUD code like trailer home. They, th they think they're the same. Okay. Okay. Makes sense. So I want to talk about the, like the quality end, cause you said you're getting more quality out of those homes too. And obviously we're big on quality as a company down here. You are the same way. It's just, uh, and that's the way I sell too, because you deal with it so much. I mean, you got the less expensive builder that, you know, they do more of that. Uh, I don't want to say track home, but builder grade materials, stuff like that. We try and stand out more. We're not the cheapest, but we're not the most expensive, but we give you a good solid quality product. So we try not to cut corners, skimp on any of the materials. So what are you using or things are you doing to stand out from the rest of your competition? Yeah, well, we, we have our very specific specifications on any structure that we build. Um, probably no different than you. So I'm still using plywood sheathing or zip sheathing on the exterior of my home, 16 on center, right where I can, uh, energy efficiency wise, 24 on center sidewalls, um, depending on what we're doing, but really it's in the quality. We will not build something we ourselves wouldn't live in, and we're not going to drop the quality to meet a certain price point. Mm -hmm. We strive for referrals, right? And we always say that, listen, we're going to be a startup company every year if we don't have referrals. And, you know, this year, I think we have five repeat customers, you awesome. know, which, which is great. You know, second homes, first homes, you know, third home, empty nester home, whatever the case is, and, you know, whatever their life journey has been. But um, it, the quality speaks for who we are as a company and the way you have the way we sell quality, you'd be hard pressed to find any negative, you know, things on Connecticut Valley homes, mm -hmm. 1600 plus custom homes, you know, knock on wood, we've never been inside a courtroom. Don't plan on it. We don't work that way. You do what you say you're going to do. And it's amazing. It works out, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, if you deliver what it's supposed to be, the customer's happy, you're happy. Um, you know, and that, that's the, what makes our world go round. Well, we're, I'm, I'm the exact same way in that courtroom things, actually, because we're the same way. I mean, we've done obviously less than you because it takes us a little, lot longer to build homes down here. But we're probably 200 and something or 250 plus homes or whatnot. And That's a lot of homes. Never, never been in a courtroom. I mean, we focus on the quality all the time. And, and I... I've also said to people, I mean, I'll send them to lower end builders if they want us to cut and, you know, and cause it's with us, it is about our brand, who we are as a builder and we're not going to skimp and cut out a whole house and make it, I always say a box on a lot with nothing in it. It's some people to try mm -hmm. and meet a certain price when there is other lower end builders that do that and are good at it. And I'll send them that direction too. Yeah, so, right. Yeah, and I love what you said there because I mean we're the same way. Haven't been to court, haven't you know? We're, it's just do what you say you're gonna do, plain and simple. Tell them and try and give them as much detail up front. Tell them their expectations up front as much as possible, and use the materials you say you're gonna use. Yeah, I mean that's it. Communication is everything. Mm -hmm. That's that's where most people start assuming and people get frustrated versus. You know, well, why isn't the cider there today? You know, he told me he was going to be there, but they don't know that their kid got sick or there was a snow day or, you know, so it's, yeah, I agree. It, it's a hundred percent. It's communication and, you know, just living by your word. Yeah. Handshakes still matter. Yeah. 
Yeah, definitely. And I mean, we try, and I've said this too, we try and get as much upfront as possible before we even sign the contract. So I try and literally spell every single room by room, every single thing out, exterior, interior, every, everything you can imagine is spelled out prior yeah. to let them know that expectation too. And, and, you know, it helps because I mean, construction during the process, it's, you're going to have some questions that pop up too with people or he said she said but then when you can go back to that paper trail and verify well it says right here in your feature sheet that you know we agreed on this you signed this before the contract right you know oh okay and you know so it, it definitely helps and, and unfortunately a lot of builders don't do that you know no. the expectations and the communication isn't spelled out like you just yeah. said well, you know, you're, you're absolutely right. You know, even for us, you know, we have customers come in and go, you know, we show them a job folder. Like that's just one job. I'm like, oh, you have no idea. <laughs> you know, and, and no matter how hard you try to cross every T and dot every mm -hmm. I and 1600 homes or 250 homes, every job, something comes up. Oh, yeah. it, it just doesn't matter. It does, you know, people don't understand that. They think you should have it all figured out like it's a true, you know, production line of a car that only has 20 options, not 10,000 options, mm -hmm. you know, and, and it can be as simple as, a, you know, dimmer light switches, right? That was the big thing. Everybody doing the LEDs. Well, if the manufacturers would tell us there's a switch on the light switch that you can change it from, a, you know, incandescent to an LED. Well, that would have saved us a whole heck of a lot of problems. Yeah. <laughs> oh, there's just, there's just little things like that, but every day something new. Oh yeah. I, I mean, I had a yesterday where I just got, I got a call from a customer and it was, I mean, I went out, I met him. He's like, can you meet me right now? I was like, oh, he's like, I'm leaving tomorrow. Cause we're so seasonal down here. Right. It's a thing. And everybody flies back and forth from up North, but you know, I go drive to him and his stuff was about a certain paint on a cabinet and then another thing was tile versus carpet i he said that i told him that he can have tile for the same price as carpet which i don't know when i would say but i you know i said let me look into it you know and so yeah. on which more than likely i'm going to give him the tile because he's been a good customer he's been very you know we've taken care it's just it's been a good process with them too but there's those give and take too throughout the whole process as you know with people and something's always going to come up like you said so yeah. definitely so one thing i want to ask you too and i always like to ask builders this is when you walk through one of your homes what areas stand out the most do you have more of a trademark or that you're known for in your homes what stands out yeah well you know we're we're a very traditional new england builder okay so you know if you think bob villa <laughs> right. Or, or, you know, some of the build shows that are out there that mm -hmm. are New England based. I mean, that's really what our bread and butter is. So our interior of our homes, exterior of our homes is that traditional New England Cape Cod colonial farmhouse look, uh, you know, so we, we do a ton of that. Um, but we are seeing a big switch. We're getting more and we're, we're sticking with the farmhouse look, but on a modern contemporary style now. Yeah, that's where the millennials are switching our, our, our normal you know, traditional look, but, uh, it's, it's, it's great. But yeah, I mean, that's who we are. There, every house does not look the same for us because we are custom and, you know, people pick what they want, even though we may not agree with, you know, like may not be my taste, mm -hmm. you know? So, but I think where we stand out is probably our kitchens. Okay. You know, we, we start off in a nice kitchen as our, as our base package right out of the, right out of the gate with Cambria quartz countertops and, uh, maple cabinets, dovetail, soft clothes, you know, doors and drawers, full extension. Nice. Uh, so we, we try and take it to the next level and not nickel and dime people on the things that they really, we already know they want, you know? And, and so we, we, that's probably what we pride ourselves on the most, I think is the kitchens and cabinets. The heart of the home, right? You know, that's yeah, most I mean, of the <laughs> so that's where everybody place. gathers, right? Yeah. I mean, it's the main place everybody usually goes to, too, when you're showcasing the house also. But we do a similar thing. I mean, we try and give uh, upper level everything to start. I always say, too, I'd rather, you know, if you go and end up selecting something lower, we'd rather credit you than argue with you, you know, because right. you, you, I mean, especially you've been in the business for a long time and and you know, you, it's, you get past the point of arguments. You don't want to argue with people. You just want to tell them what they get and, and, and 
that's this is it if you go above that then obviously you know what to expect and so on so um as far as you know i wanted to ask you this question in your area as far as building too because this is more this show is kind of more directed towards the customer you know what what things and throughout homes like of your quality and your standard should they be looking at as they're going or say they're meeting with the you know builders throughout the northeast or some what things should they be focusing on as they're yeah. kind of looking for a builder right they're 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 level of detail okay right not only on the house but on the paperwork mm-hmm. you know we have uh 25 questions to ask your builder that we hand out you know, as, as people are interviewing us, you know, to be their builder, and that's what they're doing. And we're trying not to get eliminated, right? Mm-hmm. That's our job in any first interview with a customer is let's, let's not get eliminated. Very few people sign up on that same day. And for us, we try and educate the customer on all the things that we include as standard in our home, our service, our follow-up. You know, we always answer our phone those mm-hmm. types of things. Uh, but we also send our customer with, uh, you know, here's the questions you need to ask other builders. We guarantee our price. We don't have change orders unless you change something. Mm-hmm. Now, that's from the top of foundation up, you know, because it's custom. You know, you may have bought the lot that has Jimmy Hoffa buried on it. We don't know, <laughs> right? We don't, we don't want those headaches of, of overruns, right? So for us, anything from the top of uh, foundation up, we guarantee because we're that confident and we're pricing that many homes that we really know our numbers. Um, and within that, that's one of the things. Will the other builder guarantee his cost to you? Mm-hmm. Because you know, you've been in the business long enough and, 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 and a lot of guys come in and they'll say, oh yeah, yeah, we can build it for $100 a square foot. Yeah. But by the time they added the, oh yeah, no, there's no tub in that. What do you mean there's no tub in that, <laughs> right? There's no faucet, right? the change orders start happening mm-hmm. before you know it. The customer who brought low price is now paying the highest price. Mm-hmm. Um, so when you, when you ask me that question, we take a consultative approach to customers and we try and educate them on what they need to know. So when they are out there interviewing other builders and they sh- everybody should mm-hmm. to make the right choice for themselves, they at least have, you know, the, the, the I guess the, the food at their fingertips, so to speak. To, to you know to feed themselves the information they're looking for yeah and i i agree with you big time too because that's the way i am is i try and tell them everything up front as much as possible and I, i've had the customers and I, i've said this a bunch of times this story really stains in my head but i've had the customers that were just strictly numbers people and they couldn't not get past the number even though i explained to them our allowances are higher way higher they're covering you fully if not, you're probably going to get a credit back versus yeah. this guy that's giving you a chintzy allowance. That's not, you're going to be paying extra, you know, and then dirt here is so expensive where we're at, you know, they have to truck it in from certain areas. And I was trying to explain that factor to them too. It's just, they couldn't get past that. And well, if I add this in, you're still this amount higher than this guy. So, and I'm like, by this right. time it's said and done, I'm telling you, it's a big difference. And then his wife even said our quality was way better too. So, yeah. you know, but it just, it didn't work out and so on, but maybe it's, it's for the best sometimes, as you know, too, we don't, we don't work with everybody. It is what it is. So yeah. we have the same issue up here. Uh, yeah. don't, you know, everybody <laughs> thinks what we do is, is easy and it can be figured out with math on simple spreadsheets. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, but you know, we have several customers that want to do their own site work or have, you know, Jimmy's the carpenter of choice for something, right? Um, which, which, you know, they go and hire them. We have, you know, we kind of have our forms, you know, it's like skydiving, right? Sign here, you know, because, you know, that's great. You want to do your own hardwood floors because it's cheaper for you, but you're touching up the walls. You're, you're filling all the nail holes on the trim and everything, yeah. right? They, they never get that part. They just they just see the hardwood floor cost. Oh, it was six dollars a square foot. You're charging me eight, mm-hmm. whatever the case is. So, hey, listen, it goes back to what I said before: education costs money. Yeah, yeah. Even it's for fun. the customer, and customers aren't always right. Yeah, and they live and they learn. I mean, a lot of them do, and I'm for it's and and I I hate to say it's unfortunate that a lot of them have to learn. They learn the hard way, and you know, then the, eventually on their next home, they will find a good builder. I hope they won't repeat that 
process that they did right. and go with the cheaper guy again. Yeah. Um, so it, and it's a, it's a hard learning experience, but unfortunately too, that it reflects on me, it, like good builders like us too, that actually go above and beyond and do it right the first time. Then you get the customer that had the bad experience and then they're wary with you about what you're going to do and if you're going to screw them or not too. So right, it's, right. It's, it's kind of, it is what it is too, but yeah, it's, it's tough sometimes and not a lot of people understand it too, especially the amount of work we put into it. You should, uh, you should get some of those customers and I have in the past, you know, if, if they're still happy with the other stuff that you did for them. Yeah. You know, versus the person they hired, get them to talk about that story mm -hmm. uh, because it happens all the time. Could you imagine being a heart surgeon and, uh, you know, and I walk in and I say, yeah, I don't agree with that technique, Bill. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been reading on the internet that, you know, you should do it this way, right? Mm -hmm. It's like, it just doesn't happen, but it happens in our world all the time. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So that kind of goes into my next thing too. So what would you recommend builders do to help customers select the right contract based on quality and not on price yeah i listen it's it's education in our world you know this is where the video really came in handy for us mm -hmm. uh, i started doing the modular home minute where i'm just at I'm, I'm at my job sites just walking through talking about this is standard for us this is so and so interviewing customers you know that would mm -hmm. that want to be on camera so to speak and that really changed the perception of how hard we had to work behind the scenes in the office with a customer, just telling them about it, right? Because we were showing it to them. We were putting it out there in video to where, you know, hey, we're building a trust factor with people. And, and that's really where I think the world is going today. As you know, mm -hmm. you're doing a podcast. Everything's audio visual now. Um, pretty soon people were just going to say, hey, Siri, Tell me who the best stick builder in Florida is. Look, look at that. My Siri just went off. So did mine. <laughs> Give me one sec. Let me, let me shut that down. See, my computer's listening to me. But, uh, um, you know, for us, if you can visually show somebody, like walk them through houses, do the videos, keep putting it out there, talk about the good and the bad, because it's not always peachy in, mm -hmm. in what we do. It builds a trust level with people and people are willing to pay for the quality and the trust if they think you're being honest. Mm -hmm. That that's that's the one area that we found, right? People are gonna do business with people that they like and trust. They don't buy the business first, they buy the person they're talking to first. Mm -hmm. um, and everybody's heard the horror stories about us site contractors, right? If you tell me your budget, I'm gonna take all of it, right? That type mm -hmm. of thing. It's just not that way, and you know it, and I know it. Especially if you're if you're running a, a true business, you have a process in place, and you toe the line, and that's what we do. So, I don't know. Did I answer your question? Yeah, no, and I I highly agree too because I've been doing a lot more of it too, and after and I'm trying to not and seeing what you're doing too is awesome as well because I've been doing it with our houses with the walkthroughs I've been doing full-on walkthroughs with our houses and pointing out every single little thing that we're doing and saying look how this is done look how this is done and I get a good response from it and get in and it's just I agree it's going to be become more and more and more powerful the more social media the media that we do as builders a lot of them aren't um, and I mean it's in any business if you're not getting online and promoting yourself some way, somehow, I think you're going to start falling back towards kind of, you know, compared to the people that are. And because yeah. it, it, and I've talked about this in past podcasts, it really puts, it makes people know you uh, right off the bat. They get that trust with you. And if they don't like you, you know, then they're not going to go with you because they can see that too. So if I don't, you know, I don't like that guy in that video, I'm not going to build with them. And right. we'll go to the, so it just puts you out there and then it actually puts the company out there too. And that's why I even said what you're doing is awesome because you're, you're taking that minute of time to explain like your last video, I'll keep bringing that up. You're explaining those differences that people don't have a clue about and not many right. other people are doing that. Yeah. No, that last video was great. It just so happened. I had a site builder right next to our job. So <laughs> it, it was easy pickings for me at that point, but yeah, just you got you got to put yourself out there today, and mm -hmm. you we're all competing for everybody's attention, right? Mm -hmm. in, in this world where it's just a, you know we're getting blitzed with media all the time from everybody, and um, 
I think being real and being honest and, and saying, you know, what's on your mind and, and showing people what's on your mind makes a huge difference. Yeah, big time. And I just actually had a real estate agent on my last podcast episode, and he went from day one, dove all the way, all in on social media. He, yeah. It was day one. He said, right when I got my license, he goes, I knew nobody in my area was really doing it. He goes, I went all in on it and door knocking and so on. But he goes, and now I have, he's like the top 10 social media presence in all of Canada and then top 30 in the world wow. or something. So he's, doing really good and he goes and just people he goes it's a trust factor people began to trust me they used to see my they learned my knowledge of real estate and what i'm doing and how i can and it's true too with him as a realtor you can put a listing on facebook and actually showcase the listing and it gets in front of tens of thousands of eyes versus a yeah. newspaper that's in front of you know a few hundred people so it's just, and then that's the same with building. So many people are uneducated in the building world and what you're doing. And I've been trying to do more of too, is just educate them of how these processes work as much right. as possible. It's huge. Yeah, no, it, it really is. Um, and I, and I think like you're saying, like the realtor friend, those that are in it now, you know, will stay in it and be at mm -hmm. the top of that search engine as, you know, as far as, uh, people searching for you because, mm -hmm. You know, the internet's like the big land grab. Gary Vaynerchuk says it all the yeah, time. Yeah. Right? So, right? It's the, you got to make your mark now. Mm -hmm. And the more content you have out there and the more you're willing to put yourself out there, the, the, the better the rewards will be for, for consumers finding you. Mm -hmm. And that's a big deal. Oh, huge deal. Huge. And that kind of takes me into my next thing is, is with you is I want to talk about your brand and, and that you have built. Cause I mean, you've, as far as what you've been doing with your video and content, it's definitely basically turned into another career for you. Yeah. So, you know, you decided to start another business to help people in the construction industry connect with each other. And you say that you believe in the art of conversation, connecting people. And like I said, at the beginning and kind of, um, you know, to try and grow, uh, the construction industry. So let's discuss this more a little yeah. bit how did you go all in on this and what's well, your you mission know, with that so as as the starting the videos with the modular home minute has led into this other portion of you know my personal brand dave cooper live we i started getting invited to be in these think tanks with higher level ceos of fortune 500 building companies because with the labor shortage, the switch started happening in regards to, you know, we got to do something because we can't get our homes built. That's back to that PMS, pale mail mm -hmm. and stale, right? How do we do this? And as I went to my first meeting, I came back and, you know, like a lot of us, I sat down and I spoke to my wife about it. And she says, well, take your camera. Why don't you start interviewing people? You know, because I came back saying, I really can't believe they don't know this. Yeah. These, these, these people have six, 10, $20 million salaries. They're building yeah. tens of thousands of home across the country and, and, and nobody can figure this out. But then I started thinking, you know, we do everything the same way we've done it a hundred years ago. It hasn't changed. And it's, it's silly. Everything's changed. Cell phones have changed. Cars have changed, right? We went from horse and buggy to cars in less than 10 years. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's what I did. I started interviewing people and I didn't really know what I was doing at the time. But as I started interviewing people about what's going on in our marketplace and realizing how many people had so much different knowledge than the other people, right? So, you know, the, the big players knew all about production building and it was all about, well, how much do I save if I go to modular, which was $400 or something they figured per house. You take that time, 75,000 homes, that's a lot of, you know, yeah. money, right? But that, that's what I did. I did the same thing. I was like, well, I ain't that much. Yeah, <laughs> but then, then the guy did the math for me. I was like, holy, oh, that's a lot. Yeah. <laughs> you know, but they're also buying their Kohler toilets for 30 bucks a pop, right? These yeah. are things that we don't have the opportunity to do as smaller builders. And then, then you have the up and coming millennial builders, the people that are trying to solve the affordable housing crisis, people that are working on the labor issues, people that are trying to bring technology into our industry. 
and a light bulb kind of went off for me. And I just started interviewing anybody that would get in front of the camera that, that had something to say about construction, whether it was modular, offsite, traditional construction, financing, investment bankers, all these things. And, and that's really, it just kind of blossomed from there. All of a sudden I had all these people tuning in, people wanting to be a part of it. People want me to interview them. Awesome. Uh, and I started growing this entire conversation. So now I'm at this hub of conversation which has been so much fun because, you know, modular construction in my world, we've always been kind of the tail and the donkey, right? People lumped us with manufactured, single wide, double wides, and there's nothing wrong with HUD homes or any of that. It's just, there's still a misconception. It wasn't my business. It wasn't my customer base. Uh, and, and I was like, wow, I actually have something to say and people are listening now. Mm -hmm. And when I say that, I'm not the one saying I'm doing like you. I'm just asking the questions, mm -hmm. right? And I have a chance to help drive our industry, you know, forward into this century and be part of the change that's happening, be part of the innovation that's starting to come in and hopefully be part of, you know, resolving this, you know, or coming up with solutions to the affordable housing crisis because the average person can't afford to build a house. Mm -hmm. I do it for a living and for it's expensive for me to mm -hmm. build my own house, you know, and you probably say the same thing, yeah. it, you know, the shoemakers, you know, shoemakers kid, it's, it's a true story. So that's, that's really what started happening. So I've been interviewing people and then all these suppliers, you know, want me to interview them and do product reviews and be at the trade shows like in Vegas you know, and come in and talk to their, talk to everybody because as the industry makes the shift into offsite, and I'll, I'll give you an example of the suppliers. If we take away some of the traditional building supply, you know, avenues, a lot of us go to a building supply house, right? A customer mm -hmm. like a Home Depot or Lowe's, right? For all of our lumber. Now, if there's going to be a switch to offsite, which is happening and is going to happen, it's going to see a lot of growth. Well, these suppliers are all struggling. Well, how do I be the one in that manufacturer? You know, DuPont wants their Tyvek being used. Mm -hmm. Henry wants their house wrap, their blue rhino house wrap being used, right? Mm -hmm. But the thing is, the manufacturer is not going to use everybody's product. They're going to they're gonna source what is the best price. And that's what's happening. So I have a lot of people reaching out to me that way because they want to understand how offsite works. Who do they talk to? Nobody wants to be locked out of the economy. So it is two full-time jobs, but <laughs> I, I have to say... Building homes, been doing it for so long, you know, and I love doing it, uh, but I'm really getting a passion for helping people really put together the piece, pieces of everything. Um, and, and I think it's just such a cool thing. Yeah, that's, I mean, it's amazing what you just said, like everything that you're trying to do too, because I mean, you trying to help people and, and carrying through with that passion, it's, it's only making you be a better builder. I mean, not that... I mean, and your quality and everything too, because you're learning. I mean, by inter interviewing these, these people too, that and that's why I do like my podcast too. It became almost, you know, it started out just doing a podcast, but then it, it, it was a mission of mine too to help people. Uh, and I've learned so much throughout it too from different builders, realtors, people in different businesses. But I was just. Part, I just wanted to get just to help people know what to look for in these industries because they're so big and it's a, such a huge investment, you know, as far as construction, building a house, buying a house, whatever, because not a lot of people know. They kind of just, and especially like real estate, for example, they kind of go on blind, go on Zillow, find the highest starred realtor that had all his buddies, yeah. give him five stars and, you know, then go with that person. But that person isn't going above and beyond for him or with building too. They look on Google, see who's the local builders on Google, and then they go off the cheapest builder or whatever with that. So it's, it's really focusing on the education of people. But what you're doing, too, is kind of helping everybody. I mean, the builders, you're helping the customers, you're help and that's what's so amazing about it. So Yeah. Connecting people, right? It, mm -hmm. it, that's the most amazing thing. If we can get people to talk, if the suppliers could talk to the manufacturers, for instance, mm -hmm. I'll give you an example of this. Right now, everything's four by eight, four by 10, four by 12, or sheets of lumber, plywood, mm -hmm. sheetrock, whatever. Imagine if, it, if we're doing offsite, and in your world, maybe it's more panelized for your lumber when you're doing your framing, 
Mm -hmm. and you're just buying the panelized walls with the MEPs already cut into it, mechanicals already cut into it. But think about how the shear wall calculations in Florida would change and the hurricane value strength would change if we didn't have a four by eight sheet of plywood, but we could have a 10 by 30 sheet of plywood Mm -hmm. without seams. And you could run that all the way across the studs and, you know, the the nailing patterns would be different. The opening, the shear walls would be different. All of those things that we contend with, because we're coastal too. I have to deal with hurricanes and wind Mm -hmm. and velocity zones up here. Um, Not as stringent as Florida, but up here we do. So that's kind of what's starting to happen as the, you know, as the, as the industry changes towards more manufacturing, if we can get these suppliers to talk to the manufacturers and the builders to weigh in and we can come up with a solution that makes sense and is affordable it's a win-win for everybody mm-hmm. no that's huge i mean because just the other day we we were doing a ceiling detail and we didn't have a long enough piece of plywood so now we're hiding a seam with our painters and saying it costs more money you know yeah. so it's just a small example like that to where if you had a lot a longer sheet that would just run the whole span too because then the other options were getting this birch and all this other fancier woods and you're, then you're spending right. even more money and it's just you know instead of poplar that it's just it's it's all it's yeah it needs to happen <laughs> and it's what you it's huge <laughs> right right for too. sure because they all need to start communicating everybody needs to communicate more and then plus the the cost of materials here too right now it's just insane I mean, it's just, and I, it's probably where you're at too. I mean, I don't know what you guys are typically a square foot, but here it's just keeps going up and up, especially with all the hurricane stuff. We got to deal with aluminum, windows, doors, all impact just because yeah. I, I don't know if it's the greed of the manufacturers and, and, and keep, I know with roof tile, I mean, that's just pure, you know, especially after two hurricanes that we had, that's just through the roof now. It's almost the same. I mean, our tile prices are almost getting close to what our aluminum is on as far as our roof, our metal roof. So it's just, it's great. And I talked to my roofer about it. He's like, they just keep raising the price, you know, and that's the affordability thing. That's what's affecting everybody else. So I, I I believe there's other factors, you know, with all the trade wars we have going on right now, the, the import, right. Canadian lumber coming in. That was a big issue last year steel industry you know the tariffs being put on the steel industry that's that's coming in from overseas and that that's where we've seen a lot of the price increases because yeah we're through the roof i mean it's so much more today than it was five years ago Mm -hmm. it's not even it's not even comparable oh yeah yeah big time but but we're also pretty confident that we're going to start seeing a dip as the manufacturing starts picking back up here in the States, which, which it has. Mm-hmm. And I think it's going to take some time. At least, at least that's what we're hoping for because yeah. the trade wars aren't ending. It is what it is. You know, now it's to see if there's, you know, proof in the, in, in the pudding, so to speak, you know, does, yeah. does, does it bring it back to this country? Does it lower the cost? Is it American made? Does it, does it help us? Mm-hmm. And, um, you know, this, we're going to find out. Yeah. You know, I, I think, I think if it does help us, it will be part of the solution we hope yeah yeah we we definitely hope and <laughs> <laughs> but it's it, it, a little off of that too i mean i had people with the tariffs too i i had subcontractors raising prices 10 percent because of in fear of tariffs it's not that the tariffs even kicked in they were just doing an anticipation so it's just it's crazy well, there, 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 in and of itself is another benefit to modular because a lot of the manufacturers buy in such bulk Mm-hmm. We guarantee our prices for six months, mm-hmm. which makes it harder for for a local builder who who's always subject to the price increase at the lumberyard. Mm-hmm. So as we're walking through the actual build or design or costing of a job, we lock in our price for six months, mm-hmm. uh, and 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 that's that's just an added benefit with yeah, offsite, that's... but. The, the local guy that runs to the lumberyard for every job, you can't do that. The lumberyard dictates the price and you're paying it when you buy it. Mm-hmm. And if you're a fixed, if you're at a fixed price with a customer as the builder, it kind of affects yeah. you as the builder. Cause then you lose profit as a builder. Especially so, I mean, at least we do cause we, we hold true to our price with our customers. And if there is a window increase, we're not going to, we don't go back to them and be like, well, windows and doors went up since we price gave you a right. contract so you know so it affects us too 
but yeah. um i want to go into your you kind of your marketing a little bit obviously your video has helped you market your homes your brand let's talk about marketing what are some of the best construction marketing strategies for for us it's social media mm -hmm. we do a ton of social media we do some local paper ads still we are you know where we live in new england's a vacation spot still so people come, they visit, they pick up the local paper because we do a lot of second homes where we're at as well. Okay. So we, we do some of that. But mainly for us, we spend our time online, social media, internet marketing. That's, that's probably 99% of everything we do. Mm -hmm. And we really focus on word of mouth mm -hmm. customers. You know, and uh, part of what we do is, you know, referrals. You know, we have a referral program. You refer somebody to us and they build, we're going to send you a thousand dollar check. Nice. Right. Realtors. If you're a realtor and you can hold off long enough to get paid for the house, you know, for a house to be built, you know, we, we pay a 3% commission to a realtor. Yeah. If they bring us a customer, they don't get paid on the land twice. They get just, we just on our contract for the house, you know, so we do some pretty unique things. And, and as far as that's concerned, and I think other builders probably do it as well, mm -hmm. but it's, it's all about social media and the internet for us anymore. Yeah. Are you doing more, uh, have, have a marketing company doing your social media? Are you doing it personally too? Kind of a yeah. We, we have a social media company that, that we outsource you know, most of it to. And you've had yeah, a lot of success. That still takes work. We have a ton of success with it, but it, you just don't give it to them and, and it happens, right? Yeah. You, yeah. Uh, you have to review everything and, and, you know, wordsmith things and they can make it look good and they can put the content out. They can come up with the content calendar, but you still got to double check it. They're not, they're not builders. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> so let's, let's go into your process a little bit. What should a builder do to guide customers throughout the process to help avoid unwanted surprises? I always ask this question because it's so big. Yeah. Well, I think it starts with the builder's process. Mm -hmm. You, you know, for us, we have it so dialed in. We, we use online programs to build out our construction schedule. And every time something new comes up or we miss something or, well, that never happened before, we add it to that, to that checklist of things that we need to run through. So for us with a customer, our checklist is so long and tedious. It is painful, <laughs> but it, it, it helps, helps at the end of the day. It helps with a happy customer and it helps with our bottom line you know, to make sure that we're paying attention to all these things. So I think, you know, when it comes to working with a customer, it's detail, it's all detail. Every, you got to pay attention to every small little thing because it adds up in the end. Oh, big time. Yeah. We're kind of implementing more technology. So like builder trend, we're doing more of that now to yeah. try and keep everybody in tune all with the technology, just to keep everybody on the same page. And it's helped so much too. Yeah. compared to, you know, like I said, with the feature sheets being up front, listing as much detail up front so they know, and then they get that and they sign it before they go to contract. It's huge. Yeah. It so. is huge. It is huge. Another thing a lot of builders don't do is collect the data, right? That on their customer, um, you know, depending on how busy you are, you know, we, we, we at any given time have 50, 60 houses going through our, you know, design build process somewhere along the way. And we've learned that looking at what we're building and the people that are walking in our door and the age groups, it helps us define our process, helps us define who we're talking to. You know, 80 year old customers are not the ones on social media and the web. They're mm -hmm. there, but it's not like, you know, I am, or maybe you are, or you're, you know, if you have kids, maybe what they are. And, you know, we use the data that we collect you know, just from the general information, who you are, what your age, what do you want to build, how big of a house, all that becomes very powerful in building your social media marketing as we can predict, you know, houses are getting smaller. Mm -hmm. People don't want the big open rooms anymore. They're getting the smaller spaces like grandma's house used to be. Those things become very powerful as well. And it helps you define your process and your sales conversation. We call it building consultants with the customer, you know. And I also think, you know, another tip that we like to do is we don't say, hey, here's your quote. We say, Here, here's your investment summary. Yeah. 
because a house is an investment, right? And I think that people just have to look at how they present things differently, even though it's the same thing as a quote or what have you. Um, it's just how it's wordsmithed and how you present things to people that they understand in their language helps helps you become a better builder, a better, you know, more trusted builder. And people see it like, yeah, this is an investment. It's, it's you know, this isn't a cost. This is an investment. Mm -hmm. so, sorry, no, that's, <laughs> no, that's no, that's big time right there, too, because I'm a big believer in saying it rather than saying, oh, this is the cheaper pro, you know, say this is the better investment or this is the less right. expensive and most cost effective. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. So right. those key right. words that you say and present to people are just it, it goes it goes a long way. It's a it's a big difference in in your verbiage and how you pronounce stuff, too. Yeah. And yeah. I'm big on that. I'm huge on that, too. Um, what about, I always like to kind of ask too, as far as what customer service areas are you focusing on most? What should people look for as far as, you know, the customer service aspect with the builder? And I also talk, I always kind of branch off of that. I always ask like about your focus in the long term. What yeah. are you doing to stay connected with your customers uh, for the long term? Because, you know, a lot of, a lot of builders finish the house obviously you have your warranty hopefully they honor it um we're more focused on yeah we honor the warranty but i try and maintain that relationship after whether it's home watch forum or doing you know always being that gatekeeper with contact so what are you doing sure we we have our warranty program like anybody else mm -hmm. we have our one-year service warranty where you know every year we go back and we follow up with a customer that's one year out of that custom build for us we have a marketing campaign that always reaches out christmas cards holiday tips and tricks things of that nature change your filter email blast <laughs> you know clean your gutters but i think you know for us the value that really comes in is when you have that customer 10 years from now that says hey i lost some shingles mm -hmm. nine times out of ten we just send somebody out there with a ladder and we fix it mm -hmm. we don't charge them Right. That that's where we earned a lot of trust with people. Now, we've had customers that called us back and they said they're they're getting a lot of water in their house and you show up and the gutter's full of dirt and there's a, you know, 20 inch tree growing out of the damn thing. Well, right. We're not we're not fixing that because that's just you didn't do maintenance on your house. But for the most part, we always try and treat people the way we want to be treated. If it's a 30 year shingle and it blew off, it shouldn't have blown off. It's typically going to be a certain teed or, you know, whoever, Tamco, whatever the shingles you use, your area, it's the other stuff, right? The terracotta. Mm -hmm. But it's not easy dealing with those supply companies. And for us, it's, it's less headache to go out there and fix it. And then we say to a customer, listen, if you could, could you just write us a referral? Nice. Yeah. That's where the money is for us. You know, do you mind writing a referral? Do you mind, you know, putting something on social media saying, Hey, I haven't built my house 10 years ago with them. They just came out and fixed it. Mm -hmm. Those are powerful things. And I think for anybody in this industry, it's just a matter of treating people the way they need to be treated and not saying, well, Hey, your warranty is up. Well, yes, warranties can cost a lot of money, but if they're good customers and you can get an IOU or a referral out of it, that's the same as paying somebody marketing dollars. Mm -hmm. And that's how we treat it. Yeah, that's huge. in the 10 year later than with the shingle too. I mean, it's like with uh, when we had Irma rolled through, I had people with roof tiles that blew off too. And, you know, everybody's scrambling. I get a hold of a roofer, but see us having the relationship with our roofer too. I got them over there quick. And especially right. if there was any kind of leak or anything like that, where if it was anybody else, that would have never happened. They'd have to go up on their own roof and probably put a tarp or a plastic bag up there for the meantime yeah. till they can finally get a roofer here so i mean it's just doing those little things going above and beyond and i've said this one before i we, i had a guy recently we built this house five years ago i think now he had a plumbing issue well it should have never happened it's the plumber's fault uh because he didn't nail nailed uh the the piping to a two by four long story short but and then the vibration of the pipe made the pipe and there was a little right. screw sticking out drywall screw well you know what happens with that so <laughs> uh, yeah so we ended up going over there and we paid for everything fixed it for him paid the painters right. paying all that because it wasn't it should not have happened you know another builder probably would have said no nope, 
that's all right. That's not my problem. You know? So it's those things right. of just keeping that, maintaining that relationship going. And then since, I mean, the guys already referred us to customers since we did that. So right. it's huge. Big yep. time. Um, I want, what about, I always like asking this question, we're getting towards the end here. What about you personally? You have built an amazing company brand and brand that continues to grow every single day. The stuff you're doing is amazing with the video and what lessons have you learned throughout your journey that we should all apply to our own business or lives that can help us grow? Wow. That's a good one. <laughs> you know, being, being yourself is huge and and running your company with integrity mm -hmm. and a lot of thought is very powerful <clears throat> systems are powerful you know handshakes are powerful but i think for any small business that's out there today if you live and breathe by what you wrote on a piece of paper only you're not going to be in business very long mm -hmm. right and i think that's that's probably the biggest thing in our company you know we tell everybody that works in our company if you have to think about it long and hard, you're wrong. Fix it. You know, if you have to really think, is this an issue? Is this not an issue? It's an issue, right? Because mm -hmm. there's only one way to do it. And I think for anybody in our business that, that's doing the work that we do, just like you were doing with your customer, is if you take care of things, we know it's a cost. It's painful. Some people are robbing Peter to pay Paul just to keep yeah. afloat still. But the dividends of those referrals is what comes out of it versus the bad media somebody can do to you in one second on social media. Mm -hmm. And so I, I think for most people, it's easy to get caught up in paperwork and it's easy to get caught up in, you know, trying to, to, to just toe the line on things. But I don't I don't think what we do is a straight road. I think it's more uh, like the Burma road. Right. It's windy and and you have to lead by your heart and be a servant leader to the people that follow you. And I think that's what's going to make you a better builder, you know, a better business owner and customers will also feel that. Yeah. Great answer. I mean, it's so spot on. Cause I mean, if you go above and beyond for people, it's going to return you're just, if you're a good person and you do the right thing too, and then it's going to, it's going to circle back to you too. Yeah. And like, like we just talked about, whether it's referrals or, you know, a review online, a simple review online. I mean, it just it extend down the road, something positive is going to happen and more people need to realize that unfortunately yeah. too. So, um, another thing most, I, I like to kind of ask people towards the end here that not a lot of people ask, but I want to know what are your plans for the future, whether it's business or life, you know, where will we see Dave Cooper in the future? Who will you be? Sure. <laughs> Everybody okay. asks about your past. I'm asking about the future. So yeah, for sure. <laughs> well, you know, my future, the way I'm seeing it right now is to continue doing what I'm doing both in, in modular construction and with Dave Cooper live, the Dave Cooper live thing, I believe is bigger than myself mm -hmm. and the way it's growing and what I'm able to put out there information wise for people to use is how I see myself continuing forward. You know, everybody talks about what's your legacy? What do you want to do? You know, what kind of legacy do you want to do you want to lead? And for me, I think for my future and my legacy, if if I could start a conversation that that helps, you know, move not only this country but the world to a better place when it comes to building practices and and growing the conversation between the people that own the money and the people that are on the suppliers and then us builders out here that have to implement what they come up with to make it better and more effective and more cost effective for mm -hmm. the average person um that that that's kind of where i see myself going I, I see myself staying as an advocate for our industry and being an advocate for the consumer as well because they don't really have any you know prices go up and they pay it yeah that's it you know, and I think there is a better way to build. And the only way to do that is by having conversation and having public conversation about it and let people put their two cents in. And I think that's going to help change the way we do things for all of us, which would be great. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's kind of where I see my future. I, I, you'll probably see me more and more in front of the camera if I have my way. So, <laughs> which is good. Yeah. I mean, it's, 
it, it, what you're doing, like I said, is awesome. And after, after me and you first initially spoke and actually diving into your content and watching and seeing what you're doing, we need more of it. Cause, and that's the power of social media is actually making you be able to get that present presence out there and that word and your mission and everything too. And I have no doubt about it that you're, it's, it's going to be huge and you're definitely going to help people. You're definitely going to, you know, and like I said, that's what I'm trying to do with this, with the customers to try and help you. Cause uh, having, if you have that mindset to where you're going to deliver value and help people and, and not worry about this, you know, and you're, it's more of a passion to you. It's going to circle around, like I said, tenfold, whether it's your business, your personal life, every single thing, every aspect of life is going to, it's, positivity that's simple plain and simple so yeah. i love it 100 percent, love it um last and final question i always ask everybody is what exactly do people need to look for when building a modular home and why should they choose dave cooper as their builder of choice yeah <laughs> i think everybody has to look at what's important to them and the quality of what they want right mm -hmm. uh, you know, Connecticut Valley Homes, Dave Cooper, I'm, I'm all over the place. So it won't be hard to figure out what I do and the quality that we stand for. So, but when choosing any builder, you know, you, you still got to do your referrals. You have to do your homework. You want to look at jobs, right? But at the same time, uh, you have to also look at the product that you want because mm -hmm. not everybody's built for everybody. You know, we fire customers all the time, so to speak, not fire them, but we just know that's not our customer. Yeah. You know, and we don't want to spin our wheels and spin their wheels. So I, I think the biggest thing is you have to do your research just like with anything else. Go online, do your searching. That's why it's important for builders to have an online presence to do the video because that's where everybody is searching and getting their reviews and looking. And I think why, why work with, you know, Dave Cooper? I think it's for all the reasons we, we just talked about, you know, I, I, I put my heart out there, you, you know, they, I wear it on my sleeve. There's, there's, there's no fine lines between what I say and what I mean. You know, people, I'm, I'm honest with people. It's either going to work or it's not going to work. And I think that integrity is everything. And, and I think people that are willing to put themselves out there in the public eye, you know, that, that, that says a lot and that's, that's who I am. And I'm, I'm willing to take that, that those hits if they ever come, but so far it's been great. Nobody's ever bashed me. <laughs> so don't start. <laughs> yeah. Keep yeah. doing it, man. That's awesome. Yeah. Great answer. And I really appreciate you coming on, man, and taking your time. I know you're a busy guy too. Last thing, where can people connect with you and find you? Yeah. I think the biggest platform is LinkedIn for me, you know, go to LinkedIn. Uh, that's the best place to find me, but Dave Cooper live, YouTube. Um, you, you search, um, I'll probably come up somewhere. Awesome. Dave, I appreciate you coming on and taking the time once again, man, this has been awesome. So much great information. And as always, I learned a lot from this episode myself. So really appreciate it. And thanks guys for listening and we'll see you on the next one. Thanks, Bill. Appreciate it.